Hello world, my name is Martin Allison and I'm going to try to show you how to create a very simple dungeon runner or at least the start of one. Um, I am in this setup using a code blocks on the left and I have a drawing pad here on the right so I can write and show examples if needed. Way my name I am however not sure if I'm going to need this. I have just thought I'm going to have it ready in case I want to explain something with text. Just warning you here. What you're going to create here is or oh, learn. You're going to learn how to set up a small map or large depending on what you want. You can really choose that for yourself. And then have a player uh, which can move around but not through the walls. As you can see here, I have a queue up here, and that is the player in this case. And then we have these hashtags, which works as fences. <laughs> they, they already look like fences or walls. I didn't have to write the direction I wanted to go in. Um, in this case, I'm just using WASD. So S for going south, D for going east, and so on. Now, um, you try to help you here. Here we go. If you just watch this little window, you can kind of see it's already a game. I can move it around. If, if I try to go right now, nothing will happen. Something could happen if you wanted to. And that is very important. Everything in this game can be changed. As you can see here, it's, it's kind of awkward as I have to type what I want to do. But what I'm doing here is just showing the very basics. And then you can continue on doing whatever you like with it. Way. <laughs> now let's get to it. Um, first off, just before actually starting creating this one, I just want to show you the how large a code I have for this. As you can see here, it's only 75 lines and that is with the map. So it is in reality very simple, there's not a lot to it. And all this here is just copy pasting. We can start with our own small thing here, a dungeon runner tutorial program. Yay. If we run this, it will just give us hello world. And that's it. Just set up a all new smooth program here for us. Oh boy. I'm using code blocks for this tutorial, but you can use whatever you want. The concept is still the same. Alright, let's just get started. The first thing we're going to need is the map. In the program I just show you, zoom zoom zoom, this is the map, which you just saw me move around in. Just going to copy paste it over here. This was my map 1. And this map, you can draw it for yourself. It's but I'm just first going to explain you what this actually is. This is an unsigned jar. If you don't remember it, what a jar or an unsigned jar is, you should look it up. I'm not going to tell you the very basics here of the language. I'm just going to show the concept of setting up this game, if you like so. But yeah, I'm setting up an unsigned jar array, array seen by these square brackets. Let's just remove this now. Um, for the map itself, I am to be honest too lazy to draw it up right now, but you can draw this just as you like it. I do however recommend that keep the different walls as slow as possible. Otherwise it can get too confusing for you to program. Like only have one type of sign for a wall and not just the whole alphabet you would have to check through in the code and say is this a wall? No it's not. So here we have spaces for nothing and hashtags for walls. So just try to keep it real simple. I'm going to call my map for map 1 and we're going to get into why I call it 1 later. But yeah this is a 2D array. We're going to have like X and Y to work with. 
by doing that suddenly it's just like a coordinate system just have to give the coordinates when having to move the player now let's see here this wall is one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight it's an eight by eight grid it does look right now like it's a rectangle but that's only because of all these commas keep in mind that I'm just going to have a constant here. Hold on, just have to wait something over here. Have some screen off. I have something off the screen, sorry about that. Oh, we go. We're going to make it constant. Now, we're going to have defining how big this grid is, because we don't want that to change by accident. We're just going to make it a char with width is equal to 8 and the height is equal to 8. Then now here when you're doing an array you have square brackets and then how many cells you want in this array. How many like, objects do you want to put in? And we want 8 in both directions. Oh, I want. Do whatever you like. Really do it. That's the only way you're going to learn something here. Just don't do as I do. Give it your own little twist. So just give it a width. And then oh, the height. The reason I'm making this constant is, like I said before, it's because I'm not wanting to change this. It's going to keep it like that the whole program through. In constant, I'm not going to change it. It will be constant here. Then while we're doing that, we might as well let's see make the player. Our player. My player will be. You know, I'm going to move down here just to help you guys understand a bit. My player will. Before I had him as a Q, but I think we're going to change that. Let's make him. At this means now when we finally get there, we will have this at sign moving around in our maze. Now for this player, we might as well right now add some further information because right now, what do we actually want to know about the player? For just getting him to move around, we want to know where is he and where is he going to move. And as this is just a coordinate system, we're just going to need the X and the Y. Y. So if he's here, he would be at 0, 0, 0.0, because an array starts at 0 and at 1. If you want him at like 2.1, he would be at 0, 1, 2, 1. He would stand here. But in general, let's just get some integers on this. We have in let's call, just call it player x. Let him start at one. And we have player y. One. Somewhat simple still. Yay. And pfft, was there anything else we want to have? Yeah. Um, the reason why I call this map one is because. I'm pretty sure in my games I wanted to have more than one level. And by doing this I need some kind of way of organizing it. So the next one would then be map 2, map 3 and so on. Because of the system I want to change it during the way I'm going to have a current map which will save the map so we can refer to the current map. It's going to be a lot easier. Or I think so at least doing that an unsigned char the current map uh, well this one is going to have oh oh I did something wrong up here better fix <laughs> the width I don't hope you were too mad at that some people are just getting so bugged out and then that but like I said I'm going to use this for later use Alright, let's let's try to at least draw off this map. 
I know um, every time I'm going to move the player I want to drop the map once again and I want to do that also when I start the program so I'm going to have the same code more than one place so I might as well just add a function for it um, to keep it simple I'm going to do the function exactly like this one Let's do it up here instead so I have an int update map or draw of map whatever you want just keep it simple so you understand what your function is actually doing Ta -da. Now the way to draw a 2D map, the most usual thing somebody will do to draw it is make a loop in a loop. And let's make those four loops because we know how many times we want to through this code. So let's see, we're going to make four. We just make it call it Y and U. Oh, sorry, even not Y I and U. It's equal to zero. Semicolon. And we're going to run this while i is below height. We're going to start with the y-axis. i plus plus. And let's first see if we can get this to work. We're going to in the main update map. And this is just like in any other program. When you want to run a function, just type the name of it. However, if you have this one below your in domain, it's probably going to say that you haven't defined it already because the code reads from top to down. Just want to warn you about that one. But later, let's see, let's say that we want C out. And then we want, let's say, just say. I haven't defined current map yet, so map one. Then it's let's say one. That's it. Yeah, it's a one. I we're going to take the sorry, a Y. So this code you now run through from zero to the height, height which is eight. But right now it's only one loop. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. <sighs> oh boy, what have we done? Uh, let's see here. Ah, oh, I forgot a semicolon. I do that a lot. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, I told you I do that a lot. I'm so bad at semicolons. Here we go. Ta-da! Let's see, what is it we actually just drew? What you see here is hashtag, space, space, hashtag, space, 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 hashtag. And now let's see, what we're drawing is 1 in X. And then we're going to go through all I's here. 1. And then we have all these. Hashtag, space, hashtag, space, 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 hashtag. Exactly as here. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's put in other loop so we can get it all. I'm pretty sure that is a lot better to work with. I'm going to do that with U. I could do it as like Y and X. But and this is going to be with the width. I think something is wrong with my D. I am really clicking it. Boy. I'm going to need a new keyboard and everything. No, that's the wrong. Here we go. Curly brackets. Are we can going to put this in here. And now because I, I'm, I'm just going to show you what's going to happen, really. Oh, but what did I forget? Scanning through my curve like a slow boat. Oh, I'm writing it. I'm so bad at semicolons. It's ridiculous. Here we go. As you could now see, this is not really a map. <laughs> Instead, what is forgotten here is, which is what I wanted to show you, it's the program is not capable of saying, we need a new line. We need to tell it that. And well, it's lucky for us, we're going to do that right here. 
because this one is going to change the line. So we're simply going to make an int line. You could, by the way, also instead of in line, just write it as. Oh boy, oh boy. This is exactly the same. Just if you ever get confused about this. Let's see now. Ta da! We actually got a map. And now I hope you somehow understand this. On this, if you don't, I could try to upload another video drawing it in here. For really making it mapping for dummies or something. <laughs> but let's move on to now. Now we've got the map. We're halfway through. Now we just need the player. But like, like I said here, um, I think we should. Instead of map 1, I want to go to the common map just to show you guys that you could be able to do the map changing a lot easier because then all you have to do is change common map to something else. And now um, you can't just say, I want this to be equal to this. Sadly. But what we can do is just take another. We know this one is going through everything, so I'm just going to reuse that. Um, this is not just as important as the rest of the code we're going to do. This one is just if you want some way to easier get more maps in it. Or at least the way I like. If you find anything you like, do it. Do it. Do it. Alright, let's see here. How are we going to say this? going to remove that, we don't need that. And then we're going to say that the current map is... Um, we, we're going to go it through one by one really. So, they got to be you first, I think. And I is equal to map one. Let's see if it still works. Did something right, but really, um, the, the reason why I'm doing this because then I can now add more maps up here, and we wouldn't have to change the whole code here somehow. But now let's look into how we can get our add sign somewhere. The player, we need him added somehow. Oh, let's just down here say. Uh, let's wait with that. No way now. We're going to in the update map. And what else are we going to do that down here? We're going to say that in the map. Because right here we're setting what the current map is. We're going to change that slightly because we want our sign somewhere. Let's exactly say we want him here. But as you can see, that means we're going to change the map. That's why we're also going to reset it every time. So let's see. Current map. And then be very specific. We all remember we have the exact values where he is going to be at. Going to use those. Because we're going to change those when we want him to move. Player X. Player Y. And we're going to make this point. Now this is 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. This point is going to be this sign, and that's why we saved it as player. So this point is going to be equal to player. Now let's run the code and see. Aha! You can now see him up here, chilling. And now just the last thing, how are we going to move him around? Hmm. I am going to make an infinite loop. It's going to run forever and ever. So I'm going to make an empty for statement. There's many ways to do an infinite loop, do whatever you like, as always. And in this loop, we want some way to moving him. I'm going to keep it very, very simple, and we're going to do C in. And C in, we're going to want, you know what, let's make one up here. Cha direction. 
I'm going to ask for a direction to move him. So, direction. You know, we're going to call it action. Maybe you want him to hit us, some big shoot, whatever. So, I guess action is better for the future. So, what action is he going to do? But let's first ask the user here. CL. Action. Just going to keep it somewhat short. Hope you understand that. So now we are. Oh god, the semicolons. I'm so bad at them. So then when we have the CN, we. Let's first make it. For many if statements, we're just going to use a switch. It's much more simple. And I like it. Action. And then let's make a case. Oh, sorry. A case, let's say, yes. Break. In case S, the player Y is going up plus 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 one and why is it that because y is in the top corner moving down so if we add one he's going down and then now in the end of this loop hold on in the end of this loop every time we're going to draw up the map once again so first we draw up the map when we enter the game and we're going to do it at er end of every loop and that is also why I want it as a function. So much easier. We can hide it. Let's try. <gasps> what did I... F I forgot semicolons. Oh my god. Let's see. Oh, uh, it's a char. I forgot to say that to the computer. Computer is stupid and I'm stupider. Here we go. Let's try to give... Oh no, that's bugging me so bad. Wrong button. Here we go. Let's give it S and it should move down. <gasps> you can see here first picture, second picture. Hmm. Uh, now I, I have not given it any limits. It's going to continue, continue into oblivion. <laughs> because of the way the array works, you can see how it's going to shift through with everything. But now really just to get this to work with the rest of the buttons all you do is go through them all. W is going to do the exact opposite. A is going to change the X instead. Minus minus. And D. Play X plus plus. And now you can move around. Aha. And now for the last thing, make sure we cannot walk through the walls, because right now nothing is stopping us. We can move where the fuck I want to move. <laughs> and that is actually pretty simple, because what we're going to do is we're going to look back at our current map, which in this case is this. And we're just going to check, let's see here, if current map, and then we're going to check not where we're standing right now, but we're going to check is the tile I'm going to move to a wall or not. Well, the tile I'm going to move to is player y plus 1, because doing this move we're going to plus y with 1. And then just player x, which is going to be the other direction. Oh boy. Player x. If that one is, let's say, not ah. Uh, Hashtag. If it's not a hashtag, you should move. Otherwise, nothing. Let's try that. S. We move down. S. Nothing happens. But still works with the other ones. But not S now. That's fixed. But let's try to copy paste a bit here. Oh, we just have to do these again. Minus, minus. Minus. Uh, 
Oh boy. X minus minus. And the last one. X plus 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 one. Remove you. And let's try the program once again. We can move down, we can move right, we can move right, up, right, left. Okay, all, all everything works. Let's check the collision. Up doesn't work. Left doesn't work. Right doesn't work. And this doesn't work. But they do work exactly as we want them to. Now the way you then can expand this project is you could add more maps, but you're going to need a way to change the map, add enemies and whatnot. But you can use the same principles, just think a little. Cause you know how to add a player. You should also now be able to add um, an enemy. Remember, an enemy doesn't have to move to keep it simple. You can just have him standing still or whatever. Do his thing, but um, for adding a new map, you could have an end position. Let's say if I'm here, I'm going to end it. Then every time we're moving, just end it saying, am I on the end spot? Yes or no? If I am, move to the next level. Change the current map. And well, good luck expanding your project. I hope I at least helped you get an insight of how simple it actually is. To get started with this, it's very simple. At least I think so, and I hope I was able to teach you anything at all. Goodbye.